Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday Q&A. Yep. Right? Wednesday? Yep. yep. Today is Wednesday. My okay. name is Eric Griffin, president of ITM Trading. With me, I have Lynette Zhang, chief market analyst. For those of you who don't know or tuning in for the first time, we take your questions submitted to us at questions at itmtrading.com, and we put them here on a uh, screen. And I, I don't read you. ahead. And you don't read ahead. I don't read ahead. And so you're getting a real response. So Jeff S. asks, okay. how much higher does the national debt need to go or interest rates need to rise before the national debt becomes actively catastrophic? In other words, how much longer do you think this debt system can go on? Well, that is the gazillion dollar question, isn't it? And uh, nobody knows the answer to that. The central banks don't know the answer. To, I mean, we're at unprecedented levels. Mm -hmm. But what they do know is they cannot afford an increase in interest rate because the debt, if you look at any of the graphs, it's not like the debt goes up and then it goes down. It just right. perpetually goes up, up, mm -hmm. up, up, up. And so, I mean, and that's why we've been in a 30-year bull market in, uh, in bonds because the interest has gone down, 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 down at the same time. So I, I wish I could tell you, but... On that key, I don't really know. My bet, though, is that you know they've they've postponed the LIBOR, the the U.S. dollar LIBOR contracts, shifting those into the new until 2023, which is also the year that they expect to have the digital dollar functional. Mm. So I think that a lot of it depends on how long it takes them to really bring out the digital dollar. If they can do it before then, then we probably have less time. If that's how long it takes, then fine. If it takes longer, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I wish I knew, but I don't. And that's why I've been getting ready for many, many years because we don't know. Nobody knows. And I'd rather be two weeks too early, two years too early, five years too I don't care about being early. I just don't want to be one second too late because then you're you're done, you have no choices. Right. We get so many questions that are like this one that is like, when does Lynette think this is going to happen? And, and I knew that you would answer it in that way because, and it, it's so important of, of what you, you just said, because you know, gold and silver, silver are your insurance policy. Right. And if you have it in place now, then you don't have to worry. Exactly. You can go on about your life, be happy, do the things you love to do, and not stress out so much about all this stuff if you have a plan in place, right? Right. No, we don't want the system to collapse. Nobody does. You know, life's not going to be fun when it does. But if you have your plan in place, at least you know you're set. You don't have to sit there and worry about it forever. Exactly. So I'd like to take everybody back to last March and April because when, when the COVID virus and the shutdowns hit, what do you what did you hear yourself say i wish right that you had done i know i found my hole in my strategy so i've been working on getting that filled and that's what i recommend for everybody food water energy security barterability wealth preservation community and shelter no matter what's happening in the economy, that's what we all need to feel comfortable to have a nice, secure, reasonable standard of living. Right. And if the supply chain breaks down, you can't count on anybody else but yourself. And and we've seen that. And it's not like they fixed that supply chain yet. You know, just recently, I, I think Jacqueline sent me pictures when she went for her daughter's wedding in Washington, barren shelves. So, you know... I mean, I don't know why anybody would wait, to be perfectly honest with you. Get it done. Just get it done. So Valiant asks, considering the risks of bank failures, bank bail-ins, the sorry state of the FDIC, and the puny interest rates the banks pay, would you recommend keeping in a minimal amount of money on deposit for current needs and the balance anticipated for near-term needs in a safe place, such as a safe deposit box? That is the choice that I have personally made. And then the balance of that, so I, I have enough in my checking account because I'm also running a business, right? So to make sure that I can pay all of my bills, then I have cash outside of the system, and then I have my silver and my gold. 
you know, there's only so much that you need in each one of those categories, depending upon what your circumstances are, what your goals are, et cetera. Um, but yeah, I definitely don't like to keep more in the bank than I absolutely need. No. Why? All right. So Connor A asks, after the currency is reset to gold and the mm -hmm. price jumps tenfold, will an mm -hmm. ounce then have the buying power to buy one gent's suits or ten men's suits? Well, chances are pretty good. It might buy 20, 30, or 100 men's suits because of the collapse of the economy at that time. But... Meaning, I well, so let's, well, let's clarify what you mean by that. Because the collapse of the economy, are you thinking then gold goes up, but the prices of, of a man's suit, for example, goes down because the demand has fallen off. Right. Right. So the Something prices like come that. down. Meanwhile, because that's different than the... Than the, just maintaining the purchasing power, which is what it's done through this whole experiment going back to... Well, it's, that's what it's done for the last 5,000 years. But, uh, yeah, because it's been artificially suppressed for all this time. And when they do a reset, that's when they need gold, meaning the governments, the central bankers, need gold to express somewhere near its fundamental value. So not keeping even purchasing power then actually boosting its purchasing power in terms of, let's say, if prices maintained the same level as they are right now, Right, and gold's right. at 2,000, let's say gold expresses at 10,000, meaning price is still stayed at 2,000, so therefore you're increasing your purchasing power. Right, um, but just adding a little bit more to that as well, because we have a lot of, of fiat money assets or other assets like real estate, for example, that are severely overvalued right now. So, you know, you have gold undervalued, you have the real estate assets overvalued, and that's gonna flip-flop during mm -hmm. that period of time. So you can buy a whole lot more real estate too. Right. That's right? the opportunity position. That's the opportunity position. Exactly. Right. Well, hopefully that was clear and that answered your question, Connor. Um, okay. Or Aurelia, Aurelia P. asks, I have an old silver tea mm -hmm. set and Tiffany jewelry. Will that go up in value with the price of silver? If this tea set is marked sterling, then the answer is yes, and that's true for the Tiffany jewelry as well. Because gold, you know, regardless of what form gold or silver are in, they are always monetary at its base. So the answer is yes. And in fact, you know, I recently um, had, for insurance purposes, had some of my jewelry that I've had, you know, forever reappraised. And I was actually really shocked at how, for a second anyway, at how much they had gone up until I realized, well, but yeah, but they're gold or they're silver. And that's really what moved them. It wasn't that this became more valuable. It's that the gold and silver that they're made out of became more valuable in terms of fiat, nominal, nominally. So the answer is yes, as long as they're marked Sterling and with jewelry, Mexican jewelry is nine two five. What are you looking at? Well, we had a we had somebody that asked us a question, so I figured they they could only see. I guess they can't really see all of them, but they asked us what the horses were, so I figured we'd tell them. So this one's a Jolly Roger, Sea Biscuit, Lexington, Billy Barton, Sunbow, Equipose. Two of them are, these two are the same. Right, but they're hand colorized. And that so one's Exterminator, they're the, same, they're different. the one on the far left, right over there. Right. Yeah, these are gorgeous. These are from the uh, 1930s, and they're all hand colorized, so that's oh. a print. Yeah, yeah this so one you see? This one's like a little bit darker. Exactly, and look at the shirt. I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll lean back. Oh, yeah. But you see the shirt, is, and this one is like a tan, or, and that one, it's a blue. So even though they're the same basic print, and you can see we're, yeah, I, I love these. I've had these for a really, yeah, really long they are time. Really cool. They're really, they're really quite, <clears throat> quite beautiful to look at, especially when you really look at them in detail. Okay. Uh, one day we should show them this room. So we're in an office, but we have like so much. We've been working on the sound for you guys, diligently <laughs> working on the sound. Yes, we have. So we have now, we have, Blankets on the walls and hanging styrofoam and foam everywhere. And 
it looks like a it looks like a recording studio. So well, hopefully the sound is coming is. across much better nowadays. Now that we're we were hopefully have dialed it in and gotten it good. So yeah, and, and then she also records at a home office too. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we've got that one dialed in as well. So if there if you notice a difference between the two, you can let us know. Right. Um, the money fork asks. Should people be more worried about silver oh. premiums or silver scarcity in the market right now? This is a very good question. And, you know, my friends ask me the same, the same thing or they're getting at the same thing when they ask these questions, right? And the thing about the premiums, so I've seen a bunch of comments were saying like, oh, dealers are price gouging. There are many layers between a between the dealer, between you and the raw metal, right? You got miners, you have the, the, the companies that then take that mined product and make it into like coin planchets that send it to the U.S. Mint, that then they mint it, then the mint charges a fee and they send it to the wholesalers and then the wholesalers sell it to the retailers and the retailers sell it to the general public. All these sm- tiny little margins along the way. Well, when it, gets, when it gets super busy, the demand gets really hot, it puts a lot of pressure you know, like the uh, Silver Eagles, I think they make about a half a million Silver Eagles a week. And m- way more than that has been sold in a single mm-hmm. day this last week or so. So then the Mint will raise their price, which then forces the wholesalers and then they raise their price. And they might tack on a little bit more to try to stem the flow of the demand. And then it goes to the dealers and the dealers, they might maintain their normal markup or they might push it up a little bit to also stem some of the flow. So you've got premiums that naturally have risen. I don't know what they are today, but um, I know that they've gone up significantly. And it always does when we get this level of demand. Mm -hmm. So the big question is, is how long does this level of demand sustain itself? Because like, for example, in March of last year, I think Silver Eagles were selling for about $12 over spot. Normally, you'd buy them for maybe three to four ish over spot. But like us as a dealer, we have to pay double the premium to get those silver eagles, even if they're allocated for some future use, right? Or future delivery, I should say. So silver premiums have gone up because of the demand. That's mm-hmm. natural supply and demand fundamentals, period, across the, the board. In the physical market. Like, get mad about it if you want, but it's just supply and demand. It's the way it works. The reason why real estate prices are high, supply is low, demand is high. That's just how the economy really works in a normal economy. And you should be grateful that that's how a normal economy works because when it's manipulated by the government, it's terrible. So, but what we saw in March, premiums went up to $12. But guess what? When the demand died out and prices came down, the premiums went back down to normal. So you got to make a decision for yourself, right? Do you want to pay the premium now and lock in a price and get that silver. It's going to be guaranteed for the delivery, even if we're selling it. Anybody who's selling it right now, silver into the future, for future delivery is going to guarantee they're going to get that delivery at whatever you locked it in today's price. But will premiums go back down again? Absolutely. Premiums are going to go down when the demand goes down and the supply strengthens again, right? The supply-demand imbalance, right? Now it's just gone way in the favor of demand and out in the supply. When the supply and demand come back up, the equalizer, the supply gets higher, the premiums will go back down to normal premiums. So you you just have to make your decision on what's important. Do you need silver? Do you need it now? Do you think the price is going to go up um, in the you know in the future? Is it going to continue to go higher than it is today? Is it going to get higher than $42 an ounce, which is probably close to what a Silver Eagle is right now? Um, so, so okay, so Eric answered it from that perspective, but I probably think about it a little bit differently sure. than, actually, I think about some things differently than most people do, because, and, and I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, back in March and April, when, when demand <clears throat> exploded and supply contracted, you know, we couldn't get our hands on a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Did that completely loosen up after the demand declined? Yes. Okay, was it faster to go away? And what about supply now in all the different areas? Did some well, areas dry up and did that happen faster or about at the same pace as it did in March and April? Hmm, I think it's too early to tell because March and April was sustained. It was right. a long period of time. Right. This might not be as sustained because a lot of what affected it was 
the uh, silver, the guys on the, the Reddit page on the Reddit, saying we're right. going to attack SLV, but then they backed off of that. So, right, and then they say go for physical. Right. Right. So, so, but will that demand sustain itself? I don't know. Yeah, but, but what I'm asking you, can can we get, like, junk silver, you so know, that's all secondary the different market kinds stuff. of... So that makes all, it harder. Right, okay. If so, it's secondary market stuff, it's harder because you have to wait for somebody to sell it. And right now, as over the weekend, it was 50 times more buyers than sellers. So that makes that makes the secondary market stuff tough, harder to get. What I mean by secondary market is stuff that's already been in the hands of buyers. So anything that's pre-1965 junk, dimes and quarters and whatnot is secondary market because they're not making new anymore, right? 2021 Silver Eagles are new. 2019 Silver Eagles would be secondary market because that's already been sold and they'd be bringing it back on the market when somebody sells. So I think it's too early to tell that, okay. right? Because we and don't know how the demand that. is going to sustain during right. this period of time. Um, but did in, when March and April's demand tapered off and the mm -hmm. suppliers were able to catch back up with their supply, yes, mm -hmm. the premiums came back down to normal levels. And the spot price came back down during that period of time too, right? Mm -hmm. Because it went up mm -hmm. to like 29 and it came down to like 22. Mm -hmm. And then the premiums came down too. So when people were buying Silver Eagles at $42 an ounce in March and it came all the way back down to 22, then people would have been buying them around 25 or $26 or $27, somewhere around there. So... Um, it, it, it depends, it, especially if, if you're just speculating on the price of silver. Oh, well that's, yeah. I mean, if you're speculating on it, I, then, then yeah. you don't, then you just buy SLV. If you're just right. trying to buy and sell the price of silver, then you just buy SLV. You don't have to worry about the physical premiums, right? But right now we're just in a high level of demand for the physical. And so yes, premiums have risen and they could sustain for a while or they could, taper off. Nobody knows the answer to that question. Um, me personally, I think silver will eventually, over the course of this year, whenever it happens, it'll taper back. Premiums will come back into a normal alignment. I don't think we're in that third phase of this bull market yet to where we see a blow off top and everything goes crazy. I, I would agree with that, but my personal feeling on it is about that availability piece. And since I know even at $42 an ounce, Silver is so severely undervalued. That is but true. I 100% I agree with you. If this is about <clears throat> trading, well, then we shouldn't even be talking about physical. But if this is about setting in your strategy, you know, I mean, you know, you see my buys. Do I really care about what's happening no. in the spot market? No, but you, no. so and you, you and I are buy for different reasons than what a lot of people out there buy. So a lot of our uh, of our the people that we talk to buy for the same reason that we do and I hope right. they do because right. it really should be for insurance reasons. Exactly. It's your wealth protection. It's what so when you come at it from that perspective, we don't we're not looking at oh my gosh, is this a great buy or not? We're looking at where are my holes and where do I need to fill it in so that I can live my life happily and know that I'm covered, right? Right. So that's why we buy. So that's that's the point, but if but this question is is really trying to get to almost like, uh, am I buying at the right time? You got to ask yourself that and question yet. Do you have enough silver to cover yourself? If the answer is no, then you might want to buy right now. If But it's also that scarcity piece mm -hmm. because my concern is not so much the price. My concern overall is the availability. You know, there certainly may be some people But do you think that availability that... will loosen up in, in the, for, this year? For, for a minute, for a minute. Yeah. Yes. So, but but then again, who, you know, I don't know. Honestly, these markets are so darn fragile. That is totally true. That with what's happening with this Reddit revolution, I mean, nobody knows. So, it's it's really the the question of do you feel like you have enough silver? Right. Do you want to wait and see if it comes down? You can. I mean, it did That's from gamble. March and April. I wouldn't. It came down and you could have bought it cheaper and it's yeah. up now. But it's it's a it totally a personal preference right. thing. But that's why, like Lynette, she's been saying buy when it's the appropriate time to buy over and over and over and over, right? And so it's better to buy it and just get in position right. and then have it so that you're so that you're covered.
A hundred percent. I mean, there's just not even one little doubt in my mind because there's no doubt. And there, I hope there's no doubt in any of the viewers' minds of what's really happening out in the economy and in the, mar in, in the markets and the fragility of this whole system that has been dead. Really, it's been on life support, but it's been dead since 2008. And you know I've been saying that, you know, since 2008 and calling about the for the reset especially after that Christine Lagarde interview where she used it like, I don't know, 27 or 37 times. I mean, it was like, it was almost like every other word out of her mouth was reset. And I went, oh crap, this is where we're heading into. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> nice that everybody is now talking about the reset, but the reality is that, you know, I'd rather be, again, I go back to, I would rather be, I don't care if I'm 20 years too early. I just don't want to be one second too late. And so silver for me is about barterability, and therefore that makes it an important part of my portfolio. So I just want to make sure that I have what I have. And I don't care about the price because it's so severely undervalued anyway. Right. So it's a, it's really, it boils down to a lot of factors as to what you should do to make your own decision. Um, like for me, I already have a, a bunch of silver, so I don't need to buy it at this very moment in time. I right. can wait and see what happens if I think it's going to go down. Right. If you don't have any, then you might be thinking, well, the Reddit revolution could push the prices way higher. They could they could pile start piling in tomorrow and push the price up to $300 an ounce. And, and then, you know, you'd be lost in the, lost right. in the shuffle there. So... Right. And yeah, even, it's really a personal preference there. Yeah. And just kind of referencing that, you know, Goldman Sachs came out and I haven't read it yet, but I pulled the article um, about how it's impossible for Reddit to corner the market because of all of the regulations, including some new regulations that have recently been put in place and certainly some even newer <laughs> regulations that they are now discussing. But at the same time, they maintain their price level to something like $35 an ounce on the spot market. And Citi also came out, um, not saying that first part about them not being able to corner the market, but even as silver pulled back yesterday, coming out and saying that they anticipate a much higher price in silver this year, regardless of what happens with this right now. And I would agree with them. Yep. But, yeah, but no one can tell you what the timing will look like. You know, what, how, when the premiums are going to come back down. If the spot price rises while the premiums come down, well, then you could be still buying at the exact same price it is today. Right. So it's just, right. it's tough to know exactly what's going to happen, especially yeah. with so just all the chatter it. around it. Yeah, just, just, build your, <clears throat> just build your plan and execute But if you're going to speculate on the pr just the price, just buy SLV. Um, if that's all you care about is just trading the price. Okay, so let's see. We're at 23 minutes, so we'll take maybe one more question. Cynthia okay. Aiken asks, what would the government have to do to start to reverse the inflation that's been built up over the last 100 years? They have to reset the system. There yeah, is no other way to do it. You can't suck up all of the trillions of dollars that have been printed into existence, or not printed, but just created into existence. Correct. So, you know, they would, have, they would have to allow the deflation and they're not going to allow the deflation. So they, they have to do the reset. I mean, that's the simple answer. That's why we have to do the reset. That and the fact that the debt levels, you know, they're even at zero interest rate, there are limitations to how much debt you can accumulate. You know, it doesn't really matter whether you're a government, a corporation or an individual. You know, those general laws of nature actually really do apply. They can be postponed for a minute, but they can't mm -hmm. be completely negated. So, yeah, they have to reset the system and, and into a new system anyway, one that gives them a whole lot more control is the goal. I have, I gotta. You wanna ask the next well, one? Well, no, the one that's at the bottom that says uh, George, George Fruit, would Elon. Would Elon Musk possibly bringing gold and silver from Mars affect the precious metals market here? I'm assuming yes. That would seem like a really pricey endeavor <laughs> to go mine gold and silver on Mars and then bring it back to the... To the I don't know. That seems pretty far-fetched to me. I mean, nothing's outside the realm, but how long does it take to get to Mars? How long would it take them to mine it? How heavy is the metal? that you have to bring back, how do you successfully do that? I mean, 
I think we got to be. It's probably a couple years off. I would say <laughs> at least. A couple years I mean, off. we're talking a long time. But but even <clears throat> if they even if it were, and even if they did. There's still a finite amount. Well, and how many contracts? How many contracts are there for every ounce of, of physical? Exactly. I mean, the price is held down by the fact there's so many more contracts, paper ounces, than there are physical ounces. They're yeah. already, you know, artificially keeping it down by having so many paper contracts. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So. Yeah. Probably more ounces than Elon Musk could ever mine and bring back. I think you're right. So, I guess that's it for today. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Then um, we will <clears throat> definitely do want to keep in mind, as looking at the insanity in the markets, please cover your assets. Here at ITM Trading, we do that with the Wealth Shield. And the Wealth Shield is really all-encompassing, but you've got to keep in mind that shields that can protect you, especially your wealth, are made of metal, not paper, and certainly not promises. So we've been having a few challenges. I'm sorry for being redundant. I just, if you're tuning in, we've been having a few challenges with the notifications when we go live. So please go, even if you've done it before and you're not getting the notifications, hit that bell and we're working on it on our end. Please work on it on your end. Oh, you wanted to say something. Did you want to say something? Oh, yeah, but we should probably, we should ne we should remember and do that next time at the beginning because I think a lot of people aren't going to catch this at the end. We can tell them. So there's a, okay. there's a, there's a, I called them myself. So you guys have probably seen in the feed where there's somebody's copying our avatar and our name exactly and then going and posting comments um, uh, to call them on their WhatsApp. And uh, I called them myself just to say, hey, knock it off. Um, you know, we know you're trying to scam our, our viewers and uh, clearly somebody foreign, you know, as soon as I called him out on it, he hung up on me trying to claim that he trades cryptos. And uh, so my idea was because they every time I take it down, they just put up a new channel and, and keep doing it. I take them down. They just keep doing it over and over. And I thought, what's the way that we could get him to stop? So I thought if everybody called, if a whole bunch of us kept calling the number that he posts up and annoying the crap out of him, then eventually he would stop because yeah. he would say, it's not worth it. All these ITM people keep calling me and I, I can't keep spamming them. So the number that he put up last time was 1-510-824-4172. Call him and tell him he's a jerk. Uh, can you put that number, um, Edgar, in the, we'll put that in the description And if below. we all just keep calling him over and over and annoying him, he'll stop. But I know he, he's trying to scam our viewers by acting like he's us. And he just keeps doing it over and over. Every time I get one channel taken down, he does another one. So just be on the lookout for it, too. Even if you don't call him, it's a scam. He's trying to scam people. Um, and if you feel so inclined, call him, annoy him. And if you have any funny stories... You know, send it to questions at ITM Trading and the funniest one I'll read on air. There you go. But uh, I did the virtual goal conference airs tonight that um, I did it on Monday. It was so much fun with Carrie. Definitely want to do it again. It's at 8, 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. And you can get tickets in advance by the link in the description. And I know it was, I enjoyed it a lot. I think she enjoyed it. I think you'll get a lot out of it. I was also on uh, with Dustin Nemos on Nemos News Network. And we were really talking about the silver and what's happening with Reddit and all of that. So if you want to hear more about that, just go to his channel. I thought he did a great job. Edgar, do we have the link to his channel in that? Can we put it in this description? Yeah. Okay. okay. So you can click the link because I know he's not on YouTube anymore. So right. follow the link in the description. Right. And uh, next week, I'm really excited about this. Wait, you changed the name. Is yeah. this somebody else? Yeah, it's, on, it's with Antonio. Not, it's not the right Oh, oops. Okay. Well, I thought he changed the name, but I will be on with Antonio Adonasov. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Please forgive me. I'll get it before the next time. At his BABY Investment Counseling 
and research on Tuesday the 9th. Though Is that a that's YouTube a, channel? <clears throat> okay, yes. and yes, and um, he'll probably record it. I don't know if he'll do it live. But either way, just stay tuned to our socials and we'll keep you informed of everything. So that's it. All Until right. next we meet, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.